Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So I have some bad news for some of you. So I've been a big fan of the LastPass password manager for the past year. However, recently they're actually trying to, you know, nerf their free tier. So what does that mean is that after March 16, you won't be able to use LastPass on all of your device. You have to choose between mobile or web browser, which is kind of the problem because I want my password to be standardized and I use two devices. Uh, simultaneously a lot of time I need to them to be synchronized so I was thinking you know why should I pay for a last for a password manager I, I can just build my own with app sheets okay so that's what I set out to do this morning and I have completely done in a couple of hours so the first thing you have to know uh, this is actually not a very good passwords manager it's kind of a bad way to store your password online so take it more as an educational practice rather than an actual way of building a password manager. Okay, so I'm going to use again uh, a platform called AppSheet. So AppSheet, if you don't already know, is actually a way to build an application for yourself or your family or your friends or your company uh, that doesn't require any kind of coding skill. They are purely UI based and you just input your data from Google Sheets and you'll be able to use uh, this directly. And last year or the year before, there have been, there have been actually um, what you call uh, bought by Google. So it's actually fully integrated into Google Sheets. So the two works really well together. So I'm going to call my password manager uh, SheetPass. Why is it called SheetPass? Because it's based on Google Sheets. So I'm going to be storing my data from Google Sheet and I'm going to be retrieving my data from the Google Sheet as well. So I'm using my Google Sheet as my main data um, base or data server around here. So what you need to do first thing first is actually build uh, three, uh, a Google Sheet uh, with three tabs. So the first tab is the number of applications that you want to use. So every single data table in AppSheets, you need something like a key. So this is the unique key that uh, clearly identify each separate rows as a different item. So in this case, the key will just be the row number. Just make sure they're non uh, repeat, repeated, there always has to be unique. And the name, the application, I'll just put it as the name of my, the, the account that I want to use it on. So don't worry if you cannot think of all the 50 application that you have. You can just do three or four or one or two and we will set it out later. Okay, the, sec the second one is slightly of a different way that I want to do it compared to how conventional people do it. So for a password manager to work, you usually have to have a way for you to generate the password for you rather than you generate yourself. Because if you ask the user to generate their own password, it's going to be password one, two, three. And just like SolarWind, they're going to hack and their, all their account is going to be gone. So I've actually used a tool called many tools online that have a password generator. You can also use random string generator to actually generate all the different passwords that you have. So it's just a random characters uh, consisting of capital letter, lowercase letter, uh, numbers as well as symbol. So I've generated 500 different of them. So what I'm going to do is that every time I need a password for an account, I'm going to choose from this 500 different password that I have. Uh, that's up to you. If you want to have more than 500, you want to have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, that's completely up to you. No issue at all. Okay, so once we have that 500 ready, remember always have a key and always have the, the, the title ready. For the, for the data role that you have. Uh, and again, similar to SQL or any databases, everything in the same column has to be in the same data type. Do not mix data type in the same column. Okay, the next one is the actual data sheets. So in the actual data sheet, uh, what I want to have is a date time for, for when the data is being keyed in. So the date time will actually not just serve as a way of uh, a unique key, so that the program is able to identify individual roles differently. It's also serve as a way for you to understand, not just understand, uh, serve for, uh, for you to realize how long you have not changed your password. So by looking at the date, you know that this is uh, when I last changed my password. Okay, so the name of application is actually one to whatever. So why is it the number? Because this number will correspond to the application number Later on, no need to care, just simply type 111 or something. Username, uh, we can't do that. You have to type yourself. Uh, there's no pre-generated username. If you want, you can also do the same way as a password and just uh, key it in as a unique key. But I choose not to do that because most of the time, 
uh, my username is going to be unique to the site that I visit and some of them will be email, some of them will not. So I'll try not to do the standardization. So username is just going to be a random string around here. So I'll input it as a text. So the password again is similar to the application. It's just going to be a number that corresponds to the password. So in this case, 491 means the password is actually the 491 password over here. So this will be the password that will be shown on the app later. So this is your back end. This is basically how you build your data structure. Now we want to connect them together. So what you need to do is that you go to the app sheets um, website, uh, go to my account and, and go to my application. So if you don't already have an account, just create an account. It's free and it's also bought by Google. So you can also use your Google uh, existing account to do that. Okay, so what you need to do is that you make a new app and you start with your own data and you can do whatever name that you want and then you choose the category that uh, best suit for whatever things that you have. Okay, so I'm just going to put a, a sample here and I'm going to go to choose my data. So when we ask you to choose your data, they'll ask you to choose between which platform do you want. Okay, in this case, I'm using Google as my main platform. So I just go to the, sorry, uh, go to the sheet that I created just now, which is called Password Manager, last modified at 3.46 p.m., which is the time of my recording, and select. So once it's, you select this, it will actually generate an app for you and it will go to uh, something like, so you roughly see uh, this, what is that called? Uh, this interface over here. And yes, I'm not using that mode because you know, looking at that mode on a YouTube video is not as pleasant as uh, you do it on your, on your desktop yourself. Okay, so I'm using light mode over here. Okay, first thing first, uh, you have to load in your data application is basically data with logic. So without the data, whatever logic doesn't work. So first thing, load in the data. So you go to the second tab over here, uh, go to data and add new table. So once you add a new table, they'll ask you to where you want to get the data from. I'm saying that I'm get my sheet on the Google Drive. And if you load, if you load it as the way that I load it just now, your some of the data sheet should already be around here. Okay, so if, it's, if you don't have any data in your app yet, because some things, uh, you click the wrong thing just now, doesn't matter, just choose the file again, and then press select, and that will bring the data out as a source ID. Okay, once you're done, choose the worksheet name and qualifier. So what does that mean? It's just the name of your sheets. So it's a qualifier because maybe it's some other platform and so on. So choose the one that is not gray out, if it's gray out, means this data has already been loaded into your platform. So if you have something missing, it should not be gray out like that. Okay, uh, it's gray out like that because I already have one, two, three, all the three different data that I need in this app directly. Okay, so we're gonna follow the flow where we created the Google Sheet just now, which we call the application. And we go to the table name. So table name remains as it is, application. And what you need to do now is go to view columns. So we need to see the individual columns of the thing. Okay, the rest you can remain as it is. Okay, so application, important thing, change the key to the number over here because we want to use the number as our key. Uh, the row number is not very reliable sometimes. It's a bit wrong. So I usually have my own key in this case. Um, and we have to change the application here to a label, okay? This will be the label for the, the reference table later on. Okay, so do the similar thing with your sample password where you change the key, uh, the key to the key column and then change the label to the password column because the, the password and application here will be served as something we call a reference table to our main data sheets. So once you have done those two, go back to your main data sheets over here which is represented by this table in your Google Sheets and go to, again, view columns. Okay, so yours should look somewhat similar like that. So some changes you need to do is change the key to, uh, the, to the date time over here. So the unique key that identify every single row will be the date time that you key into the system because it has to be unique unless you, know, you can key in uh, two data at the same seconds. Okay, so the label will be the name of the application. That's the output you want people to see. I also do not want people to see my date time, so I also hide it. And the rest, I believe you can remain as it is. 
we shouldn't need niche mark of the changes. So now you have done all the data. Let's go to our user interface. So UX actually called uh, user experience. So it's how the interact, how the 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 people will interact with the with the interface later. And I forgot about one thing. I completely forgot about uh, putting the reference table in. So let's go back to the data. Okay, once we go to data sheet and view columns, you need to go and change something here. So on the third column here, where there's a name of application, what you need to do is to go to edit, and this will bring up uh, this interface over here. Change the column type to reference. Okay, it's, it will become a reference table. So what does that do is that it will only take data from a different source table, in this case, application table. So what as, whatever being key into this column has to come from your application table. You cannot use anything else. So of course you can use button or auto, it doesn't matter. Okay, so do the same thing for your password. Okay, if you don't understand why, you, you will understand later. Just do it exactly first, change your data type to reference and change your source table to password. Okay, password, password, application, application. Okay, once you're done, click done. Okay, so that should have all the data structure ready to go. And now we go to UX. Okay, so the UX, I would uh, want to have a diff two different data. The first one is the one that display the, the, the password that I entered. The second one is to input the new password that I have. So let's go for the input first. So I already have them built, but I'm gonna build another one just in front of you, just to go through with you how the process works. Okay, so usually I go for the input first because it's a lot easier. So I go for a new view, and this will bring up uh, this interface. So you'll see a lot of um, very messy thing. Uh, just ignore them. So, so this is form. So this is uh, my input two. I'm just gonna rename this, and it is. And for this data, I'm gonna choose to put into the data the the data to display or input doesn't matter. Okay, I'm gonna input into data sheet, which is why I'm gonna use data sheet here, and I'm gonna use form because form is for you to enter the data. Okay, once I'm done, I'm, yeah, there's not much thing to change because if you have done everything uh, correctly, uh, on the right, your application should show up like that. So how it works is you just key in the name of the application. So you can see the reference table that we built just now will allow us to only choose from the, the 10 application that we have keyed just now. And of course, if you want a new one, you just go to new and you allow to, to build a new one. Maybe just build uh, 11. And application is uh, app sheet and save. Okay, so you can actually go for another one immediately directly. So the next one is username, which there's nothing we can do. We have to key it in ourselves. And it goes to the magic part, which is the password. So the password, you just choose that. Uh, which password should I use for my app sheets? Uh, I like this one. Let's go for this one. Okay, then we click save. That's all. That will allow the, the data you enter to go into the system directly. Okay, now we have done the input. Let's go to our export. Okay, I'm going to delete input too, so it's not that confusing. And let's go to our uh, data summary, which is our password output. Okay, so let's go for our output here. I have also built it, but I'm going to build it again just to show you how. Okay, so for this data, similarly, we're also going to use the data sheet. But what we need to change here in order for it not to be so complicated and show up all the password and username when I open it, which is not very secure, I'm going to go into table. So a table view will be a very, very compact view of all the user account that you have and your username. So uh, what I also like to do is that I will actually use by a column order. So for column order, what you can do is that I only want to show the name of the location and the username in my application when I open it up. So that when I open up, my password will not be shown directly uh, to any user. And if you don't do that, you realize that uh, yeah, your password, username, application will be shown directly on the screen, which is not ideal if you have someone looking over your shoulder. However, of course, if you enjoy the convenience, that is your choice. So what I'm, what I'm gonna show here is to just do a, a column order. So I'm just gonna do name application and username. Okay, so my app will only show uh, two different um, categories. Only when I, let's say, click in, I will be able to see my password. So if I don't want, I can go back, 
choose another one, let's say Twitter, and then I can have my password over here. Okay, I'm again gonna delete my, oh no, not yet. Okay, so basically the, the user, the use, the, the using part of the application is done. This is more than ready to go. But you know, I, I like my app to be a little bit better looking. So what I usually do is that I'll go down here to display. So choose the, the, uh, the views that you want to change. Go to a display and you can choose whatever icon that you want. So currently we are on the, a list view, which is very ugly. Let's say I want to use, what do I want to use for my output? I just put a book. Okay, you see the output icon or logo has been changed to a book over here. So it's much easier to, to comprehend what is it about rather than reading the text. Okay, once you're done, you will see that the, the other view has been like that as well. I has been final, has been changed as well, the icon. And let's try again. So let's see here we, what we do we don't have. So we don't have an Epic account. So now I've registered myself an uh, Epic Games account. I want to enter my password. So I go to input, I choose Epic here and my username is uh uh porn master uh 420 or something like that like any people that registered their username on epic and their password the best part you can't use your insecure password that you usually like to use you have to choose between one of the really difficult one so i'm going to use this dp blah blah blah, blah j g r and okay i'm going to save it and if i go to my data sheet you see that my epic account is here I have my username as a phone master for 20. If I click in, I'll be able to use my password and go ahead with my registration with my data safely key in around here. Okay, so I'm gonna go to output and delete the duplicate uh, view that I created later. And we will actually go for a little bit more customization just for the app to look a little bit better. So the app is practically done. So if you are happy with how it looks now, you can click away or go to my other videos. But if you do want to make it looks a bit better, this is where you go to. So go to UX and go to brand. Okay, this will actually customize the look and feel of your app. So the first one, of course, choose light and dark. I prefer dark mode. Uh, choose your color. I like a uh, red color, maybe a pink color over here. So it will change the primary colors that display throughout the application. Your logo, you can actually choose among all the 20 different logos that is built into the app sheets. Or you can actually go to custom and go to choose whatever image that you upload onto Google Drive. So you can actually support transparency over here, as you can see. And I downloaded uh, this image from Pixabay, which is a free website, a website to, for you to download free image to be used on your videos and uh, projects and so on. And the launch image is the image that's shown when you do that. The, the, the syncing the app, you know, this will be shown as uh, that image is called a launch image. And a background image, I can see there's a ladder over here. You can actually choose among the, the built-in one. I'm going to change to this, which is very ugly. I'm going to change my, something like that. Okay. And I also like to change a little bit of anything else. View. I also like to show logo in a header. Maybe I want to show the name in a header so I know what I'm looking at. I want to hide the menu and search button so that I don't, because I don't really need that. Um, and yeah, that, that's practically it. So let's deploy it. So once you're done, press save. So that will save the process of what you have. And sheet pass is done, you know? You, you don't need your last pass anymore. You have the sheet pass, which is a way, uh, which is a password manager that based on Google Sheets. It's also quite chic. Okay, so again, I don't endorse you to use this password manager as your only password manager. Maybe get something important stored somewhere else and go not those not important accounts, you can put it here. Okay, so this is practically your app that you can use on your phone, on your web viewer, you can use on whatever browser. You don't even need to install a browser extension because this would practically live as a web page itself. That's practically it. So the input, Choose my username, choose my application, choose my password. I believe you can also add your own password if you want, but it's fine rate is more than enough. Save it, and you get a new account over here. So that's practically it. I hope you enjoy the, the, the video that I make and just have a, and yeah, something that entered that are all coming in right now. Okay, so that's it for now. I hope you enjoy the video that I have. I'm gonna say this the second time again, and thanks for watching. Goodbye.